folks, there may be a little justice in America. The picture you see in front of you, <clears throat> excuse me, is Imperial Wizard of the traditional Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Frank Arcona. Mr. Arcona was an outspoken Imperial Wizard of obviously the traditional American Knights of the KKK. And he was found shot to death Saturday near Belgrade, Missouri. The body of the 51 year old Leadwood, Missouri resident was discovered near the Big River by a family fishing spot in the area, according to the Washington County Sheriff, Zach Jacobson, in southeast Missouri. Washington County Coroner Brian DeClue told the Kansas City Star that Acona died of a, let's see, gunshot wound to the head, and it was not self-inflicted. This is a homicide investigation, he said. The KKK Group's national headquarters is in Park Hills, Missouri, about an hour's drive southwest of St. Louis. Ancona shared a name with a car dealer in Olef, but the two are not related or connected in any way. Ancona's KKK group is among the newest and most visible of the Klan factions in the country, although it's not considered the largest. Founded around 2009, the traditionalist American Knights have made headlines in recent years for such such actions as distributing flyers during the Ferguson, Missouri protest, warning that they were poised to use lethal force to protect themselves from demonstrators. Yeah, okay, so they had to drive about an hour so that uh, they could protect themselves from demonstrators, really. The group also regularly uh, distributed leaflets throughout neighborhoods and cities around the country in an effort to recruit more members and three of its members were charged in Florida during uh, 2015 with plotting to kill a black man. Jacobson said authorities learned on Friday that Anaconda had disappeared and that his car, a 2015 Ford Fusion, had been located by a U.S. Forest Service employee on Forest Service property near Potsy. I'm sorry, Potsy. He said that deputies secured the area and on Saturday, he requested assistance from the Missouri Highway Patrol. During the investigation, one subject was arrested on an unrelated warrant and two search warrants were executed in Washington County, Jacobson said. Subsequently, a body was discovered on the bank of the Big River near Belgrade, Missouri in Southern Washington County. The body was identified as, as Mr. Ancona and his family has been notified. And Connor had not been seen Wednesday morning, authorities said. Ledwood Police Chief William Dickey told the Park Hills Daily Journal that police discovered an, an I'm sorry, Ancona's, uh, learned Ancona was missing when they were contacted by his employer. Ancona's wife, Melissa, told police that her husband had received a call from work saying he needed to deliver a vehicle part across the state, but the employer told police that Ancona was not sent on a delivery run. So yes, yeah, somebody called and set this boy up. Dickey told the Daily Journal that a search of Ancona's home found a safe that looked as though someone had taken a crowbar to it. Everything was missing from the safe. Dickey said, and Ancona's firearms were missing from the house. The police chief also said that he questioned Melissa Ancona about a Facebook post she'd made the day he disappeared. In the post, she said she was seeking a new roommate. Dickey said Melissa told him that when her husband left, he said he was filing for divorce when he got home. So she figured she would need a new roommate to help pay the bills. Uh-huh. Okay. And Connor's son, also named Frank, posted on his Facebook page Friday that no one has heard from him, no one has seen his car or seen him personally since February the 8th. His bank account hasn't been used, his cell phone has been turned off, goes straight to voicemail, he wrote. Time is ticking. The more time we wait, the stronger the bad possibilities become. 
News of Ancana's death lit up social media late Saturday and early Sunday with a barrage of comments from those expressing delight with his demise. Ancana has had posted recruiting videos and cross burnings on YouTube and was profiled in a domestic terrorism series published by The Star in 2015. Those who monitor extremist groups say violence is nothing new among some white nationalist groups. Infighting is quite common, said Davin Burkhart, vice president of the Kansas City-based Institute for Research and Education on Human Rights. Among the folks we've dealt with who are defectors, the internal fighting is one of the most common reasons why people decide to get out of the movement because they fear for their lives. In December, an argument over the leadership of another KKK group appears to have led to the stabbing of an Indiana man who was attending a loyal white night of the KKK pro-Trump parade in North Carolina. One of the two men charged in connection with the stabbing is the group's California State Grand Dragon. The other, Chris Barker, is the Imperial Wizard of the North Carolina-based group who has been engaged in a verbal battle with Ancana for years. Burkhart said it will be interesting to see what happens to Ancana's KKK faction now that its leader is gone. Do they just go away, which would be awesome, or is there a second-in-command who's going to step up and take his place, and if so, what direction does he want to take their faction, he said. Do they go the David Dukish mainstreamer route, or do they go the more hardcore route? In a series of interviews with The Star in 2014 and 15, Ancona described his clan as a Christian organization and a fraternal order. The only thing secret about the clan are that our rituals and ceremonies are only for members to see, he said. That's part of the mystique of being a member. <laughs> yeah. He said his clan was not a hate group. How can you be a Christian organization and hate other people? Yeah, but uh, since you guys were plotting to kill a black guy, uh, please explain to me how that works. I've actually taken a lot of heat from the other white nationalists because of that, he said. I'm called an end lover and a Jew, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do everything I can to hold it to the principles it's supposed to be by. But the group's website is filled with race-based language, including this statement. This order will strive forever to maintain the God-given supremacy of the white race. Ancona, a self-employed contractor, said his organization had members from every state except Alaska, Hawaii, Nevada, and Utah. Missouri contributed many members, he said. Missouri's always been a strong Klan state, he said. Kansas, not so much. Ancona was not popular with other KKK groups and was vocal in his criticism of them. He told the Star that there were few Klan organizations in the country that he considered legitimate and had been in squabbles with some of them. Although Ancona claimed his Klan had thousands of members, actual figures are impossible to come by for such groups. Watchdog groups say the numbers are grossly overstated. Burghardt said while the traditionalist American Knights was one of the more active clans distributing flyers in cities across the country on a regular basis, I think they only had a few hundred members. The clan itself is nowhere near where it was in the 80s and 90s, he said. You're looking at probably a couple of thousand nationwide who still want to weigh, engage in that kind of stuff. And Connor said his organization did not condone violence. Those who do, he said, are not following the clan doctrine. In 2015, authorities in Florida arrested three members of the traditionalist American Knights on charges of conspiracy to commit murder. The suspects, current and former employees of the Florida Department of Corrections, alleged, allegedly plotted to kill a former inmate after his release from prison. The murder allegedly was to be in retaliation for a fight between the inmate who is black and one of the correction employees. Now, there are various videos out there, folks, that uh, pretty much state what this uh, news report confirms, that the Klan has infiltrated law enforcement, i.e. police departments, uh, prison facilities, uh, probably even up and including the FBI. So this just lets you know that uh, those aren't just fairy tales. According to an arrest affidavit, authorities were notified of the murder scheme by a confidential informant inside the Klan. The informant was present during discussions involving the three suspects. 
and Connor's Klan also drew media attention during the 2014 protest in Ferguson, Missouri, where members distributed flyers as the city awaited a grand jury decision on whether to indict the officer who shot and killed an unarmed 18-year-old black man. The flyers warned that they would not tolerate violence by protesters and would use lethal force if necessary to defend themselves. Well, um, if you're not going to vi tolerate violence by protesters, um, in my mind, that means that uh, you're going to be proactive about the use of lethal force. But that being said, critics said the Klan was trying to incite violence, and and Kana told the Star that he was not inciting violence, but letting those making terrorist threats know that they wouldn't sit back and let somebody throw a Molotov cocktail at them. Well, if you carried your asses back to your homes, uh, you probably wouldn't be in the vicinity uh, in order to be hit with uh, any type of uh, flying debris or cocktail. On a video posted online, however, he used much harsher language. These people are acting like savage animals, he said, of protesters, and that's what they are, is a bunch of savage beasts. And Connor told the Star that members of the traditional American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan would gather at his home for an annual Christmas party. And we had a cross lighting right in my backyard, he said in 2015. The police kept their eye on us, and people were driving by and taking pictures, but we didn't have a single incident. And Connor said his group held cross lighting ceremonies a minimum of every three months. We've got property in four or five locations here in Missouri and a few in Tennessee and Virginia, Florida, he told uh, the star. He called the event a Christian ceremony. The cross is wrapped with a few layers of burlap that is soaked in what we call Klansman cologne, he said. It's basically a mixture of kerosene and diesel. It's kind of a spiritual thing. It's almost like a revival at church. You kind of come away feeling on fire for, for Christ, and you want to go out and spread the word. Folks, I am definitely going out tomorrow and have a cocktail or two in honor of whoever busted a cap in this guy's head. May he rest in hell.